what I say is that you can't give people stats if they feel unsafe. That's what I'm saying. It matters overall because the narrative should be what I've been saying for some time. This is not a city out of control. This is a city where we believe in law and order. Now, I can point to some cities across this country that is sort of frightening what you're seeing, but not in New York. We don't see encampments all over our, all over our city. Our crime is decreasing. Our subway city system is safe. But I know New York is also want to feel safe. And as long as you have these random act of violence that you're seeing from time to time, it's going to make people feel as though uh, they're not as safe as they would like to be. Yeah. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, to all of you out there on all of our social media platforms. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, first off the bat, before we get onto this video, uh, just no noise in the background, air conditioning, very warm, very, we're, we're in a heat wave. Uh, also the echo in there, we have not uh, insulated the uh, new studio yet. Uh, that's going to take some time. We're trying to readjust the audio to balance out for that. So be patient with us. We're just, like I said, we're, there's a lot of work to do when you uh, move into a new facility on there. But thank you. Thank you for supporting. And remember, supporting us, subscribe to that. Hit that button below. I mean, really, truly, that's one of the ways. At the end of the video, you'll see, you'll get the other ways that you can help us. Now, let's get into this. When I was young, when I was a wee nip, um, growing up in New York City, one thing is that, uh, you know, when I was a kid, except I'm a child born in the 60s, growing up through the, those decades, 70s, 80s, um, there was a lot of crime in our streets. Uh, there were a lot of drugs. Uh, a lot of prostitution, crime. Uh, you had all variations. If you walked down in a subway, uh, you saw drug addicts, the smell of uh, feces and urine. And, uh, you know, these were the things that they did. I mean, when I was growing up, uh, when the sun went down, you made sure the kids were back home, you know, when I was growing up, because basically, you know, the uh, the freaks come out at night, as the song says, and that's the truth. Now, fast forward to 2024. Uh, with all that's been going on, with all the what's, you know, that our uh, civil leaders have been out there, our, our mayor, our governor, city council, and all the things that they've, they've done to hurt New York City, because they don't care. They don't care. They just want to control the city, you know, and I keep saying to people, you know, uh, people like Tim Pool and others, they say, get out of these cities, get out of them. You know, it's like, why should I? This is my home. This is where, you know, I was born and raised. Why should I leave? Because these politicians uh, have, have ruined here. Uh, but the thing about it is, is that we put them in office and we could take them straight out. Yeah, the thing about it is, is that we need to fight. And the way to fight is, is that ballot booth. You, when you go in there, don't mail it in. Don't, you know, send someone with your ballot on there. Go yourself. Go into that ballot booth. Hit that switch that, that changes New York City. It's been done before. We've gone through situations before. Like I said, as I was growing up, we've, we've been through it before. And it took the ballot box to change it once again and it's going to happen again it is slowly happening upstate it, it's happening up there in upstate new york slowly here you go, you're starting to see a change in the you know in people who have voted democrat for many years they've changed that all you have to see is you know a lot of these rallies for example the trump rallies that that happened in the bronx look at all the people they said well no those people couldn't have lived in the bronx well, why didn't why didn't you send people out there to talk to them You'd be surprised what they're saying. You know, I spoke to a lot of people out there, and I, you know, I seen that basically, you know, they've said for themselves, you know, we need a change. We need to change because there is, you know, a lot of these situations going. And here's another thing that, that's been going on, and this is what the story today we're going to be talking about. 
8th Avenue, there's a strip of 8th Avenue that's gotten really bad again. And it used, it used to be bad back in the day also. You have to remember, this is the area where a lot of the prostitution, uh, we're close to, you know, we're over near Times Square, you know, uh, the deuce, you know, where there was a lot, you know, the mob was running, the, you know, the deuce, uh, you, you know, you had the bodellos, uh, you had the strip clubs, you had the, um, uh, the video place, you know, the, 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 the 25 cent porn houses and stuff like that. You know, all that slowly starting to work its way back in again. Remember, it took, you know, many years to change this out. It took large companies, uh, I hate to say it, it took a company like Disney that it took to cl help clean out the deuce. Now what's happening? And they call, you know, the New York Post is calling it uh, Midtown Manhattan Strip of D Despair. And, you know, this is the things that is happening to New York in many different places. This is where the businesses are leaving and all that. We need, and the people are leaving. We need to put into a situation where they need to stay. We need to reinforce our situation here, batten down the hatches, you know, start defending ourselves on here. You know, we heard that story the, the other day where the guy attacked a girl, you know, uh, sexually attacked a girl. Um, you know, the neighborhood came together and went and looked for this guy. They hunted him down. They knew where he hung out and they got him. And believe me, you know, they, a little, little bit of citizen justice came through and, and basically they handed him over to the cops. But here, let's read into this. And this is out of the New York Post. Horror stories from New York City's 8th Avenue strip of despair where stabbings, drug use, and public, public defecation are the norm. And this is what's going on. You know, you've heard this from San Francisco. Now it's happening in New York. Business owners and residents along Midtown's Manhattan Strip of Despair are so frequently robbed and harassed by drug addicts, psychopaths, that they've stopped trying to resist or even bother calling the cops for help. Almost every day, someone comes into my store to steal, said 45-year-old Aran Kumar, who owns a coffee shop spot on West 39th Street in 8th Avenue. They take beer the most. They take it and walk out, he said. It is too dangerous to try to stop them. Yeah, we know from what happened uh, to a couple of other convenience store owners, and one of them was arrested trying to defend himself. You know, and you know, it, it's still there is still a lawsuit pending on that. Kumar's shop is located in a stretch of Midtown between the Port Authority bus terminal and Penn Station that comes to be known the Eighth Avenue corridor where. Hard drugs are used in the open and emotionally disturbed people are wandering the streets screaming at passersby. Several locals told the, New York, the Post that they're fed up and scared of what the neighborhood has become, despite New York Mayor Eric Adams insisting on Monday that it's actually getting better. Yeah, bullshit. You know, they said, oh, there's nothing here. There's nothing going on. But, you know, recent data from the NYPD shows a mixed bag of progress for the Midtown South Precinct, which stretches from 9th Avenue to Lexington. Uh, there have been 172 reported robberies so far this year. That's down 24% from the same period of 2023. But felony assaults are up nearly 12% with 245 reported. Grand larceny is down 16%, but petty larceny is up 11%. And retail thefts report are up 3%. Drug arrests are also up more than 25%. But it's clear that the lawlessness re remains rampant. The, po the Post caught one man urinating in the streets in broad daylight on Monday. Public defecation is also a common sight, residents and shop owners said. Open drug use often escalates into violence. The Post obtained horrific footage of a brutal knife fight in April between an alleged drug dealer and a user outside a building which led to one man being badly injured. Last week, one woman was stabbed to death outside Port Authority and an emotional disturbed man was shot in the leg near West 33rd Street and Broadway, both in the same night. Locals say that many of the troublemakers are drawn to the neighborhood by concentration of homeless shelters, drug addicts, treatment clinics in the area. 
it, it's like we're being bombed, said Charles Pellegrino, 71, who's lived in the neighborhood for nearly 30 years. It is a bad situation. You see money exchanging. You see crack pipes be, being lit. And I said, we said this in another episode way back, that crack is back. You see people fighting. You don't want, dare. You don't want, want to dare to get stuck in the middle of that. He added, you never used to have a feeling that you have now, a feeling of being unsafe in the middle of the day, just walking around post-COVID. This neighborhood has been nuts. Pellegrino knows the danger firsthand in November of 2022. He was walking near his home when a stranger shoved him into a construction site, sending him to the hospital with a dislocated shoulder. My glasses shattered. And I was lucky to avoid a major head injury, he said. Kumar, the coffee shop owner, was slashed in the face two years ago when he tried to stop a shoplifter from snatching an entire case of beer. After that, he said no, he no longer intervenes when people come to steal. Ying Lao, who manages a 39th, 39th and 9th Avenue grocery about a block from Kumar's store, also said trying to stop raising shoplifters isn't worth the risk. So he restored it to pleading. I asked them to, to put it back, but if they don't, you just have to let them go, the 33-year-old said. He added, I live in East Harlem, which is a lot safer than here. It's getting worse. There is more crime, more drugs, and more homelessness. Lou thinks the high tourist traction in the, in the neighborhood driven by Times Square and the nearby transit hubs draws the homeless to the area because the tourists are easy marks for beggars and thieves. When the homeless begs for money, the tourists don't want trouble and will give them money, he said. Tourists, meanwhile, said they're terrified of the area, including 32-year-old Hiliana Rutini, Rutini I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, and her husband, Filippo Paradiso, uh, 39, who are visiting here from Italy uh, for the first time. We don't walk around here at night. It's too scary. We prefer to go to sleep. Uh, said Rutini, who is staying at a hotel across from the Port Authority. At night, this area is full of drug addicts. If we come back, we will stay somewhere else where there's not so many homeless and drug addicts. Longtime residents don't have the luxury of leaving when danger comes knocking, something tenants of one apartment building on West 39th and 9th Avenue experienced two weeks ago. We've had six tenants who couldn't get out because there was some Somebody smoking crack in the lobby, said Super John Poor, I mispronounced this, I'm sorry, Poor Miagiano, uh, 59. The people were trapped for 15 to 20 minutes until I finally chased him out. He was really dirty, smelly, and incoherent. You can't, you can't even reason with them at all. He said numerous tenants called 911, but the cops never bothered to show up. Pomegranate isn't the only one to complain that the police never show up when they call for help. Kumar and Lou both told the Post they've stopped bothered to call 911 when they're attacked on after countless incidents in which they receive no response. It's a waste of time, Lou said. You spend time on the phone describing the shoplifter, but nothing gets done. So what's the point? It's not like the police will get, get my stuff back. The police won't respond to small thefts. Merrick Eric Adams told the New York Post on Monday that the NYPD's hands have been tied by, by laws preventing them from arresting people for just being high in public. That's right. So this is where we get, you know, people said, well, you know, you, you, you shouldn't have these laws in place because, you know, innocent people go to jail. Well, there are laws that prevent people from acting the way they are. But because of that, because of these laws that doesn't allow them to be arrested, this is what happens. He said officers are doing the best they could, adding that he's done walkthroughs of the neighborhood and thinks, and thinks things are improving. Really? <laughs> yeah, right. This is, you know, <laughs> you know, we joke around that burn, that burning situation cartoon where he goes, oh, everything fine and everything's fine this is what merrick adams thinks is going on he's sitting in the middle of flames and saying everything is okay there's always fights and psychopaths around here pa palmerino said 
There was a fight right here in the corner around the middle of April where one guy was stabbed in the heart and in the groin. They were both covered in blood. They were like gladiators. The fight broke out in broad daylight in the afternoon of April 16th on West 39th and 8th, where security footage shows one man slashing and defend, who defended himself with a shirt. And there's a little bit more into this, but, you know, the thing about it is, and go ahead and read this off of the New York Post on that. You hear what they're saying, and you heard what I said when I was younger. We didn't go out at night. We, you know, as soon as that sun went down, we stayed home. You know, the thing is, my mom, God, you know, God bless her, you know, you know, she's still with us. You know, and the thing about it is, she worked at night. She worked at day and she worked at night. She, daytime, she, she worked as a superintendent. At night, she cleaned offices. You know, her and my cousin, they used to go, uh, at, you know, on the, this was on the east side in the 40s. And this area, the area I lived in, which was in the 20s, wasn't a great neighborhood at the time when I was a kid. You know, like I said, Lexington Avenue, prostitution was run rampant on um, Lex Park and Madison. It went straight back, you know, and, you know, and for a time period, it was, that was going on well into the 90s when I left for Florida and I came back, it got cleaned up. But what happened was the prostitutions went mobile. The, the street prostitutes went mobile or they went further back to the um, 10th, 10th Ave and above. And the thing is, is, now it's moving back in. And you see the stories we've discussed about prostitution uh, in Queens on Roosevelt Avenue. Uh, you know, nothing being done about that. They say, well, we've raided the places in Egypt, but you haven't arrested anyone. All you've done was shut down and padlock these places. And there's already, we already have a story coming out. Uh, the uh, cannabis shop owners that have been shut down for illegal cannabis, um, we're finding out that the Sheriff's Department violated the Constitution when it comes to them shutting them down. They did not follow the right of law. You know, I mean, nothing against the NYPD. The NYPD is trying to do their job the best they can. But unfortunately, the politicians have their hands tied because of all this DEI. And say, oh, no, we can't have the minorities. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we can't have the illegal migrants. Blah, 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 blah. You know, they talk through their ass. But meanwhile, the crimes are there. You have to say, you're not getting away from the crimes. You're, you're compounding them and increasing them. You're causing damage to the city of New York. This, you know, for, for, a, for about a decade or two, the city was running fantastic, making money. People were happy. You know, yeah, there was crime, but the, but the NYPD was handling it. They were handling it. Now their hands are tied and they can't do anything about it. Laws that need to be changed, need to stop with the shop, shoplifting, the drugs, cannabis licensing needs, needs to be halted completely. Only medicinal, that should be only medicinal. And even that should be limited, you know, on there. Recreational, every, all this stuff needs to be shut down. You know, all this crime, you know, you have the shoplifters taking the stuff from the stores, putting them back on the streets and selling it on the streets for, you know, to make money for them. And who knows where that money is going to. Remember that. They say, well, they're making money so they can feed their family and all that. Hmm. You wonder who, who else is involved in it. You think about that for a minute. Because there are those, there are those, you know, that are running these shoplifting, you know, these shoplifting teams. It's not just someone going in and just shoplifting. They're, they're going for specific items. Very specific items. You know, like detergent, toothpaste, perfumes. You know, they're going for specific items and they're selling out. I mean, we had the report from Gristidi's, uh supermarket that their stuff gets stolen, their ice cream gets stolen and gets resold to the bodegas down the block. You know? It, 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 it's, it's a circle of, of how this is being, so, being stolen, resold, stolen, resold. And, you know, this is what has been going on. 
So tell me in the comments below your thoughts about this. Are you know are you from New York? Can you have you lived a long time here? Have you seen some of this stuff? Because it is all it, you know it's it's spreading out like a disease all over the place. Even in the Bronx, the situation in the South Bronx on there, it's starting to happen again. A Fort Apache, you know that old Fort Apache, the Bronx, where they used they used the nickname a long time ago. You know the basis of that movie that was out a long time ago, with Paul Newman. It was a very violent area. So comment, subscribe, a like, share, and I hope today I've earned your subscription. Very important. Stay tuned on after this, where you, there's additional things that you can help support this channel. We thank you for your support. We will see you on the next video. Thank you for tuning in, and bye bye now. Thanks for watching, commenting, and sharing this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe as this helps the reach of this channel. Finally, as a content viewer, you have the ability to help support this channel as new internet laws around the world will diminish our reach and affect our sponsors. If you choose to help, there are two ways listed in the description below. The first link will lead you to a pay site where you can make a monetary donation. The second will lead you to our gear shop where you can buy shirts, mugs, and other gear. Discounts will be listed on the site. Once again, thank you for watching and your support.